my brothers and sisters, we were asking a question, are you prepared or are you ready to be a spouse, whether it's a husband or a wife? Are you ready to be a spouse? Are you, what it, do you have what it takes to be a husband? Do you have what it takes to be a spouse? Many young children, as they're growing older, they get to the age of 15, 16, 18, 19, and they start saying, I want to get married. Are you serious? Do you know the qualities that are required for a person to qualify to be a spouse, for a person to qualify to be a husband or a wife? There are qualities that are needed. And subhanAllah, many people, because they are sexually active and because maybe they're feeling like, you know, they, uh, they're ready to be uh, a father somehow, or they want to be a mother, or they, they just want to be sexually active, they want to get married. That is not, that is not a qualification for you to be material worth being a spouse. Remember this. So number one, do you know how to interact with people? Do you know how to speak to people? Have you learned how to talk to others? Do you know how to communicate? If you don't have communication skills, you cannot succeed in a marriage. You're not yet ready to get married. You might think I've been dating, I've been doing this, I've been doing that. It's very different. You need to know how to communicate, number one. You need to know how to talk, how to come across. You need to know how to word things. You need to know when you want something, you don't just blurt it out as though you're addressing, you know, uh, someone who's of no value. The most valuable person in your life, the person who in your family who has high value, your own spouse you will be addressing. So you've got to know how to speak. And I think many men don't actually bother. They don't even care. And a lot of women as well, they don't care how it comes out. They say it as it is because that's their spouse. That's the husband. That's the wife. Say it as you want. That is not how it should be. It is supposed to be said in a way that is very attractive. It makes one feel the love, feel the kindness, feel the care within the statement. So you know how to talk to someone. Then number two, you need to be very, very patient. Patience is the cornerstone. Patience is a quality that is required for you to be qualified as a person ready to get married. If you don't have patience, I'm sorry, you're not yet ready. So it doesn't mean that just because you're sexually able, you can now get married. No, if you don't have patience, you don't know how to talk to people. I think you need to hold on. You need to do courses on this. Be very patient. There will be statements that are said. There will be things. There will be problems. There will be issues. How do you address them? You know, they say you be responsible. And I heard one of the scholars say recently that responsible is such a good term. When they say the men are responsible, they should be able to respond. Whenever things go bad, you can respond properly. So you, you respond in an able fashion, hence responsible. Wow, <laughs> mashallah. Obviously, being responsible is far broader than that, but it is definitely within the meaning of it to say when something goes wrong, you need to be able to respond in, in a proper way. So if you don't have patience, you end up divorcing people. You end up not realizing that the problems can be resolved. The matters can be resolved. You need to learn to be slightly selfless. Don't be selfish. If you're selfish, you're not going to get along even with the, the best of the globe. You won't get along because you're selfish. So like I say, it doesn't mean that now I'm 20, 21, 22, I need to get married, 25, whatever you are, 26. No. Did you develop your qualities? Do you know that, for example, it doesn't mean you can afford a car and you've bought a car that you can now drive the car. You need a license. In order to get that license, you will need to do courses. There is a theory as well as a practical. In order to qualify in the theory, you are going to need to learn. You're going to need to study. You're going to need to know what's happening. You're going to need to know a lot. And if you address the matters in a beautiful way, you will be able to succeed in your marriage. Just like if you are to answer the questions correctly when it comes to matters of uh, driving, you will get your theory. You, you, you will pass your theoretical examination. Same applies if you don't have the theory here, you will not be able to succeed. Remember this. So you need to learn how to talk to people. You need to be patient. You need to be selfless to a great degree. Learn to accommodate others. If you don't know how to accommodate others, you may not be ready to get married. 
Sometimes you don't like to do certain things. You have to learn to like to do certain things that you may not ideally like to do, simply to put a smile on the faces of those whom you love. So you need to know this. Simply on, uh, to put a smile on the faces of those whom you love. You need to understand this. My brothers and sisters, sometimes we don't like certain things. We must make sure that we make our folks happy by engaging and participating in what makes them happy. By engaging what, and, and participating in what makes them happy. So this is the reason why it's important for us to, to actually develop these qualities before we get married. Develop these qualities before we get married. You need to know this. My brothers and sisters, another quality that we need to have together with selflessness, together with being patient, together with actually uh, learning how to speak and communicate, kindness. We need to be very kind and kindness begins at home. You need to be very kind, kind in a lot of different ways. You need to be generous. Don't be miserly. Don't waste. Yes, I agree. Don't waste. But at the same time, don't be miserly. These are beautiful qualities that we need to develop before we get married. And the reason why I say this is because if we don't, we're really going to have a major, major problem. So my brothers and sisters, these type of disasters occur because people don't know, uh, people don't know uh, that you need to develop yourself as a person before you get married. Do you have the patience? When you look at someone, you're looking at a spouse. Sorry, there's a little bit of a disturbance in the background, but that's fine. When you're looking for a spouse, you're actually, uh, sorry, I'm just being disturbed by a noise in the background. When you're looking for a spouse and when you have someone you think you're going to get married to, if it is superficial and if it's only based on what you can see and if it's based on what you, you, you know, just the looks of the person and you haven't really based it on the character and the seriousness of the relationship with the maker then i think you're going to head the wrong way that's why we have so many marriages that are breaking so many marriages that are breaking people don't know they get married to someone who turns them on and then what happens as soon as they see the character and conduct of each other they get turned off and they say in the same way i fell in love i've fallen out of love have you heard that well, the reason why this is happening is because we haven't developed ourselves. Character is not there. Dean is not there. Connection with the Almighty is not there. Nothing is there. You're just a person who looks cool, who might have a little bit of money. That's not what makes a husband. That's not what makes a spouse. How many times are you prepared to utter beautiful words to your spouse? Words of love, words of kindness, politeness. How many times do you look at your spouse and you actually say beautiful words to them? I think many of us are lacking in this because what happens with this many of us are lacking where we don't say these good words we are not polite we don't even like to discuss matters when you have an issue it becomes a, a, a screaming and yelling match lower your voice you're speaking to the spouse your spouse the mother or father of your children that's what's happening you're speaking to the mother or father of your children so lower your voice don't scream don't yell sorry i know there is a disturbance in the background you could excuse these brothers who are here. Um, it's actually disturbing me quite a bit, but it's fine. So my brothers and sisters, here goes. I hope this topic, I'm going to have to repeat it anyway. Uh, I, I'm going to have to repeat it simply because of disturbance, but otherwise, inshallah, we, I hope you get what I'm saying, that we are not prepared to get married. We are not necessarily prepared to get married in the sense that I haven't, we haven't qualified yet to get married even though we think we have the reason is you haven't developed yourself as a person you're still quite selfish when you look at someone's daughter do you really feel that this is a very special person the way i address them when there is a crisis in the home between your mom and your wife how are you going to address the matter do you have any experience in crisis management or in dealing in arbitration, zero experience. So what happens? We start screaming and yelling, and we don't know which side to, to, to you know, to uh, to take. <laughs> we don't know how to deal with the matter, uh, and this is why people start suffering. And we, we we threaten that we will divorce them. We say no, any small thing. Say well, you can go home. If that's the case, you can go home. If if that's how you speak, you were never ready to get married in the first place. 
Every little thing you're threatening your spouse, you can go home, I went out, I'm, I'm going to go, I'm going to my father's house, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. All of that is a waste. 